All right, awesome. So the first thing I want to talk about is making sure that you're actually using the proper keyword match types. And what most people do is they're only using broad match, which is just a keyword that's bare. So if you're bidding on terms like maid service, commercial cleaning, janitorial service, and you don't have any special characters encasing these, these keywords, then this would be considered a broad match keyword. Um, a phrase match is pretty much the same thing, but now you have quotations. And I'll explain what, what each of these mean in a second. And then lastly, you have exact match, and this is a keyword that's contained inside of brackets. So as I mentioned, broad match is just bare, right? So if you're doing a, um, a broad match example, like let's just say we're bidding on the keyword cleaning service. So there's no quotations, no brackets. This means that your ad could potentially come up for people that are searching for these terms. Um, cleaning service, of course, uh, maid service, because that's a related term. But it can also mean you come up for things that you don't necessarily want to, like how to clean white shoes. So that things like this is really where you can start to burn through a lot of your money if you're not careful. Um, same thing if people are searching for car wash or maybe like best cleaning products. So yes, even though the word clean or, uh, or even related terms like how to wipe uh, a countertop could potentially come up if you just start using a broad match example like cleaning service. Now let's look at an example of phrase match. So we want to try and confine them a little bit more. And this is one of the first qualifiers, which is putting quotation marks around that same keyword. So again, cleaning service would pop up um, because it's going to be anything that's within the specific order of the quotations. So similarly, if someone's searching for cleaning service near me, guess what? That's good. That could potentially come up. Or if someone is searching for best cleaning service nearby, even though best and nearby are not within these quotations, cleaning service is still within the right order. Now, similarly, if someone is searching for cleaning company, well, guess what? Because it's not cleaning service, it's not going to come up. Or same thing if someone is searching for housekeeping service, it's not cleaning service. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Now, I want to go over the last example of keyword match types, and this is going to be exact match. So if you recall, with exact match, your ad is only going to appear for what's inside the brackets, nothing, nothing less, nothing more. So even if you have like best before this or, or nearby after this, that's going to negate it. It's only going to be specifically what's in the brackets. So to show you guys an example, if, again, if we're bidding on the keyword uh, cleaning service, cleaning service is going to apply. But if we search for best cleaning service, because we have best, it's going to be negated. Our ad will not pop up. Same thing if someone is searching for the keyword cleaning service near me. Guess what? This is not going to pop up. Um, and, and you kind of get the picture, right? So those are really the three match types. And my best practice is to actually avoid broad match altogether <laughs> because we've seen some really odd things pop up sometimes, which just should not be there, like how to clean white shoes or, you know, the, these different types of services that really are not relevant. So when you guys are doing this, ideally, you would want to compile some type of spreadsheet and you would have what I call your foundation keywords. So these are going to be the broad match. And even though we're not actually going to upload this to Google, we're actually just using this to create our phrase match and exact match keywords from. All right. So everything that you see on the left here is replicated in these two columns with the appropriate brackets or quotations around them. And then you would simply, you know, copy and paste this, upload it to your ad group, um, which I'm not going to go into right now because this lesson would be way too long if I did that. But that is essentially how you would construct your keywords. All right. So I want to move on to step number two which is using negative keywords. And this is by far probably one of the most underutilized tools that pe people are just not even aware that you can do within Google. And similarly to our search keywords, how you want your ads to pop up for specific search terms, well, guess what? You also don't want your Google ads to appear for specific search terms. And if you're wondering what are some ideas of negative keywords, well, I created a list here of some different examples. 
So the first example would be related cleaning terms. So these would be similar services that you guys don't do. So let's just pretend that you do um, residential and commercial cleaning, but you don't do uh, like window cleaning or pressure washing, you know, or carpet cleaning. Then you might want to include these, these keywords as a negative just to give you some added protection. Um, same thing would be DIY terms. So sometimes when you guys are just bidding on certain keywords like, um, you know, like house cleaning or, or maid service, well, your ad could potentially come up for, for um, people that are searching how to do it themselves. So if they're wondering like, what's the most effective way to clean my home? Or if they're wondering like how to uh, do housekeeping properly, or where do I find a good cleaner? These are things that you might want to be careful for. So I always include in my negative keyword list, DIY terms. Um, another example would be education or employment. So if people are searching for jobs, this may or may not be a good thing for you guys. You know, if you are hiring, then absolutely you can create a separate campaign specifically for employment. But for the most part, you know, things like jobs, wages, salaries, uh, accreditations, it's kind of similar to DIY terms where these signal that someone is searching for either how to start a cleaning company themselves or how to get hired for one or how to find contracts. So, you know, you don't want your ad to appear in front of these people. Same thing, competitors. So oftentimes I'll upload a list of the popular franchises into my negative keyword list. And same thing too with local competitors. So local, smaller cleaning companies, this can actually be a hit or miss. Um, some people believe it's actually smart to bid on your competitors, assuming that your ad copy is dialed in and like you have a good offer because you could potentially steal some of their traffic. But most times I actually have not seen that to be the case. I've seen the conversion rate to be pretty low. So I often include them in the negative keyword list. And then I talked about this to cleaning products. This one, especially guys, make sure that you're, you're uploading like Bissell vacuums or auric vacuums or seventh generation, you know, these different types of products and brands because your ads will probably come up if you're not careful. In the same keyword planner that I create in a Google sheet, I also like to create one for negative keywords and organize them by those specific segments that I just talked about. All right, monitor fraudulent clicks. This is the last step, number three, guys. And this is something that's a little less prevalent, especially if you're in like a smaller market or you're not spending like a ton of money on ads uh, every month. So if you're working with a smaller budget or you're in a very rural area, you probably won't have to worry about this as much, but monitoring fraudulent clicks, because believe it or not, there are bots and your local competitors who will specifically search um, for cleaning related terms. And they're gonna see your ad and they're gonna click on purpose just to charge you money. And it's, it's not cool. It's really messed up, but this is how people do it to try and stay competitive and try and push you out of the market. But luckily there's two things you can do about it. So option A is to actually do this manually where you can install a code from a website called Clicky. It's, it's free. It's an HTML code uh, that you would put on the header of your landing pages or websites. And what happens is anytime a visitor lands on these pages, it will actually monitor these specific people and their IP addresses and keep track of this for you. And what you can do over time is you can see from the exact minute someone landed on your page, um, their IP address, where they're located, what's the name of their server, and you know some pretty, pretty interesting stuff. And just, sh just to show you in real time what this looks like. Um, so this is an example inside the Clicky account. And what you can notice is one, where the specific visitors' IP addresses are located. Oftentimes, you're going to see like the common cable providers like Comcast, T-Mobile, um, you know, Verizon. But then you'll also see iCloud Private Relay sometimes. And this isn't always the case, but this is kind of a red flag because this means that someone's purposely hiding their IP address, either using like a VPN uh, or something else. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of qualified people that use these, but just by looking at this, when you can see like a Canadian flag or like, you know, just different countries basically 
using these iCloud private relays or you know things that you've never heard of before, it's just there's a good chance that those are probably not qualified clicks, right? So like if you were to open up some of these, for examples, um, and I'll open up some normal ones in the USA. So like this campaign we're running in uh, in Minnesota. So you know for the most part these don't look too suspicious. But then when we start looking at some of the other ones where people are in, you know, different countries like Guatemala or Mexico or, uh, you know, this one, we have this person in India, you'll start to see like some suspicious activity. And guess what? <laughs> There's a good chance that these are either spammers or bot farms that are specifically just clicking on your ads for no reason. So what can you do? If you notice the strange activity, you can actually copy and paste this IP address, go into your Google Ads account settings and upload this into a section that's called um, IP exclusions. And this is the manual way to exclude these IP addresses from clicking on your ads anytime again in the future. All right, now, if you don't wanna do this, there is option B, um, which is not free. It's gonna cost you a little bit of money, but it's gonna be a lot more simple. This is with using a, a specific automated software like ClickSees or ClickGuard. Uh, there's a couple other ones. I think there's PPC Protects, maybe a few others, but it's a monthly subscription that you pay to. You can upload as many Google accounts as you want. So if you're running like multiple campaigns or if you're like an agency like myself in managing multiple clients, it's really helpful. But you know, most of you guys probably will be in the former. Once you subscribe to the service, you can upload your accounts and this will actually do it for you. So you don't, have to upload like any individual codes to your landing pages or anything. It will actually track all of that for you. Um, and it even gives you kind of like a first priority uh, threat detection based on what they deem to be either low threat, medium or high threat. And again, it just like the previous tool, it will show you their IP address, um, where they're located. So like this one, for example, we're not running any ads in on the West Coast. Um, so this looks suspicious to Google automatically. And I didn't even know, um, you know, I would have never even been able to tell unless I came in here and looked manually. So it is a pretty accurate service. And something you can also do with this tool is set what are called rules. So for example, um, ClickGuard, which is this software I'm using, they will actually tell you what specific rules they have as default. Meaning like if someone clicks on your ad two times within that one hour, we're going to mark that as, you know, fraudulent, right? But you can actually come in here and edit specific rules. So I'll show you quickly. So for example, the default rule is, hey, we're going to block an IP address or a specific device that makes more than two clicks within one hour. And I think that's a pretty, you know, a pretty realistic rule. But if you wanted to make this more, um, you know, aggressive and you say, hey, if it gets more than two clicks within 20 minutes, I want to block them. Or same thing, if you want to stretch it out and say, if it gets more than five clicks within an hour or 10 clicks and so on and so forth. So there's some really cool things that you can do, but I would say their default settings are usually fine, at least to start off with. And then you can kind of gauge as you go on.